let's get a proper X thread going. Post creepy, weird, and unexplainable stuff that happened to you or others close to you, but had no reoccurrence and never bothered you again. Can be green text or not. I'll start. Be your old friend on work trip to Florida. Stay at resort with coworker for three days. Last night before checkout, getting drunk at bar. Coworker comes down to the bar, looks pale, says he saw a ghost in his room. Clown on him, agree to swap rooms for the lols. Switch rooms, go to bed, and a few hours later, wake up to noises in bathroom. Investigate the bathroom, find nothing. Return to the room, see shadow figure sitting by my bedside. Stand there in disbelief, blink a few times, and it vanishes. It all happens so fast, but I know what I saw. I'm terrified. It's almost 5 a.m., so I just stay awake, sitting in the armchair looking at the bed for what seemed like an endless amount of time. Eventually, it's time to get up, so I take a shower and go grab breakfast, and I pack up. Coworker and I never talk about this again. Why do they never talk about it? A few days later, I did some research, and it turns out that we stayed at a haunted resort called Casa Monica. There have been many reports of hauntings there, especially on room 411 and 511. That night, I slept in room 410. Fuck that place and fuck Florida. Can't even sleep without getting harassed by shadows and shit. I was standing outside with two others smoking cigarettes, and I was lightly tripping, but only enough to make colors brighter and no hallucinations. All of a sudden, and completely silent, I saw a flash so bright it lit the entire sky, and a giant orb of brilliant white light, about two to three times size of a full moon, crashes into earth. It happened in a second, but I was so shocked. I was jumping up and down asking the others, excitedly, if they just saw it. Apparently they saw a flash, but not the actual object. Never seen anything like it before, or since. Five to six years old, living in the countryside. Every night, a girl in a pink dress would climb the wall that separated my house from another, seemingly, abandoned house. We would talk for a couple hours. My parents couldn't see her. Moved to a different city, and I never saw her again. Probably because you moved to a different city. I kind of get nostalgic about it sometimes although I don't remember her appearance quite well. Also, I am sure that it is not a fake memory because my parents confirmed that it actually happened. My grandma has a shadow person story that she's told dozens of times. Be her, around 12 years old in the 1950s. Usually walked home from school with company, but one day stayed late helping her teacher. No one was picking her up that day and had no classmates to go with her forced to walk home alone for the first time. The path she took was mostly dirt road, flanked by dense woods. Took around 15 minutes to get home. Five minutes into the walk, she feels a presence following her. Looks back and notices what seems like a shadow man following from a distance. She starts panicking and walking faster. She feels the figure matching her speed, staying just at the edge of her vision whenever she attempts to look back. The shadow figure gets closer. She fucking books it and runs as fast as she can. Towards the end of the path, the wooded area ends and she can finally see houses in the distance. She starts screaming like a lunatic for help. Two of her neighbors, who were on their porch smoking, go help her. As they get close to her, my grandma turns around and says that the figure that was following her retreated into the woods and just vanished. Her neighbors also saw this fucking thing go back in the woods and that it disappeared like smoke. They walked my grandma home and explained everything to my great-grandparents. She never walked that path alone again, and apparently, a few guys from the neighborhood got together to search around the area for whatever chased my grandma, but they found nothing. I vividly remember this from my childhood. Be me, 10, your real friend. Camping trip with class to a small town outside of hometown. See the place we're staying at has a really weird vibe to it. Later that evening, go to bathroom, open the door before turning on the light, and see this creepy floating hand in the darkness. It was glowing like a glow-in-the-dark toy. Call friends over to see what I'm seeing. We all stand there and look at the hand slowly approaching us from the darkness. Friend flips on light. Nothing. See a rubber glove lying on the floor 
where the hand was floating. We look at each other in disbelief. Tell our teachers, but they didn't believe us. Go figure. I was just reminded of this after reading another green text the other day that was fairly similar. Is this a common phenomenon? I've got one. Now, I use a nicotine patch and I put it on later in the day than usual, so that could account for this. I usually sleep with nicotine patches on, but I always put them on in the morning. I like the vivid dreams that they give me, but anyway, sleep and have an extremely vivid dream. Laying on the top bunk in a bunk bed with my wife, pretty quiet and boring at first. Suddenly, hear a hissing of a voice coming from below the bottom bunk. The voice alone evoked the deepest feelings of despair I'd ever felt, and the voice had nothing on the words it spoke. It told me that my faith, Christianity, was a lie, and it offered me no protection. It told me it would kill me, and send me to eternal torment, unless I accepted its domination. I was frozen. I couldn't speak. Finally, I built up the courage to tell it that. I didn't believe it, and it laughed. The laugh sounded like dried skin of a decomposed body, cracking apart. I told it to leave me alone in the name of Jesus Christ, and I jerked awake. I look into the bathroom. I always keep a recessed lighting of a bathroom on to guide my way to the toilet in the middle of the night. The light is normally a cool white, but this night, it was glowing a warm orange. Lay there next to my wife, frozen. Knew that it wasn't right, but I also knew that I was wide awake and wired finally fall back asleep to normal dreams. I've never had anything else creepy like that happen to me. The dream was bad. I felt a despair so acute I can't even begin to describe it. But the light glowing a reddish orange was what made this experience stick. I was wide awake. That part I can't explain away as just a bad dream. Five years ago or so, early hours of the morning, wake up, suddenly, to my left, a close-eyed vision of the letters UFO, and a not quite orange, not quite yellow, almost like a new color, sit up and turn to my right, close-eyed vision of some gray entity, suddenly darting into view against pure blackness. Not a typical gray alien entity. The eyes are narrow slits rather than bulbous. For some reason, it's wearing typical old lady style attire and what looks like a curly old lady wig, narrows eyes at me, and as it does so, I perceive it not to be distinct from the blackness, but rather as if it were a mask that this impenetrable blackness wore. I could sense that the blackness was the will of this being the more its eyes narrowed to slits, which seemed to cause me to freeze somehow internally, leaving me unable to leave this gaze. Almost as if it was an alternative to fear, I instead smile somehow. Suddenly, it darts off to the right at high speed and this black space dissolves away to my normal surroundings. I say closed eye because I've had this a few times now, and it's not typically like closing your eyes, but rather as if some dark vision space is opening up where I'm looking, with nothing to do with anything I'm looking at. I was looking in the direction of my window, but I somehow don't think there was really anything out my window. Be me at Underground Black Meadow and Noise Show in Central Mass. Vendors selling merch. Sketchy looking bald guy with head tats selling records. Ringing a little bell at everyone who walks by his table. Looks at me in the eyes and smirks with an evil look. I'm suddenly compelled to look at his merch. Sift through records, all obscure shit and a couple classics. He touches my hand and says, take these ones. His hand is ice cold and his other hand is two CDs. He says five for both, my favorites. It feels like he's looking through me. I give him a five and I'm on my way. Turns out he drums for the headlining band. They do black magic on stage and the room feels freezing with dreadful vibe. Listen to record next day. Nasty riffs, scary vocals, and it's littered with uncanny noises. I'm into that shit. I research the record label on the back. I find their website. It's pretty standard for a black metal label, but has this sick grimoire look to it. Start clicking on the random sigils. My face when found a fucking ARG in this guy's label. Dozens of hidden pages with links that led to ritual manuscripts and unlisted YouTube videos. 
Videos are super creepy backroom style with occult imagery and rituals. Spend about four hours ripping through the website. Can't seem to get through the three password protected pages. Thinking they're probably hiding unreleased music or something, I decide to sleep on it. I have this awful fucking nightmare about a birdman with red eyes and huge black wings. Birdman is on a hill spreading his wings and looks through my soul, relaying to me all of my karma and reminding me of every awful thing I've done. Birdman drops wings and flies directly overhead, blacking out the sun and laughing maniacally. Guy from show's voice says, wake up, wake up to 50 or so crows outside my window, screaming and pecking the glass. Look at CD cover art and it's exactly the same demon I saw in the dream. Throw away both CDs and don't even listen to the second one. Be me. Really need the toilet. Run upstairs. Bathroom and toilet are in separate rooms. I have to go past bathroom to get to toilet. Glance in bathroom. Shower curtain half closed. In my mind's eye, see creepy guy poking out from behind curtain. He's staring at me. He's grinning. All his teeth are yellow. His eyes are yellow and red. Pale skin and crazy black hair. Get freaked out and run into toilet. Tell myself it was just my mind playing tricks. Don't tell anyone because it was just my imagination. Fast forward to next morning. Sister pulls me and asks if we can chat. I ask what's wrong. She says, Anon, do you think the things our mind's eye can see are real? I ask her to elaborate. She tells me, Last night I was thirsty, so I tried to get a drink from the kitchen. But then, in my mind's eye, I saw this really scary guy looking at me. He was leaning out from the fridge. He was staring at me. He was grinning and all of his teeth were yellow. His eyes were yellow and red. And he had this pale skin and crazy black hair. I was too scared to go into the kitchen after I saw that. Even if it was just in my head. She sees my face drop. I told her I saw exactly the same guy the day before, but in the bathroom. I have no idea how that was possible. I've never had anything like that happen before or since. That's like the second guy to say that. Seeing the spooky man was a bit creepy, but hearing my little sister describe the exact same thing the next day will probably stick with me forever. I got one that may or may not be explainable, but it was pretty weird. Be working in the Pacific Northwest Coastal Range over the summer in 2014. Property cuts off the generator around 10 p.m. each night. Be laying on a picnic bench in the parking lot and smoking a cigarette and stargazing like I do most nights before I go to bed. Property is in the middle of nowhere and the quote-unquote parking lot is a gravel space surrounded by trees, so the stargazing is amazing. Get to watch comets for hours and can even see the Milky Way. See a little satellite drifting way up there at a decent clip. It eventually passes directly over me. The split second that it is directly above me, at the perfect zenith, the entire parking lot fills with bright white light. Brighter than day, I can still remember seeing the hard line where the light ended and the shadows began on the tree trunks at the edge of the lot. Similar to if you shined one of those 100 lumen flashlights down a dark trail. Light goes out, and my eyes take a second to adjust to the dark and to be able to see the stars again. Little satellite is still moving on the same trajectory and speed, as if nothing happened. Huh, wow, that JPEG. Go to bed. It wasn't creepy and doesn't really fit the bill for other UFO stories, so I never really considered it as paranormal or supernatural, but it was definitely unusual. Nobody's been able to explain how it happened yet. Be me. Around 13. Go visit grandparents for summer vacation. Chill on the porch with dad and grandpa after lunch. Very rural area in Eastern Europe. Woods all around with small villages and fields dispersed throughout. Look at the nearby woods as grandpa tells a story of a small meteor hitting there last week. See a strange shape appear to the right in the distance. My face when? It's a fucking square. Not a cube, a square. Or at least positioned so strangely that we only see one wall at all times. It's pitch black, with no discernible texture and perfectly sharp edges. Moves slowly right above the tree line, not making any sounds. It's not very big. Considering our distance to it, we conclude that it was about 4x4 meters or 13x13 feet. We just stand there 
considering what it might be. No military testing sites anywhere near, cause shithole demilitarized country surrounded by other shithole demilitarized countries. No commercially available drones yet at the time. Sit on the porch every day for the rest of summer, hoping to see it again, and never returns. Anans, did I see Ayla Maus, or was there some kind of technology that I'm not aware of in the 2010s? In the 2010s? Yeah, there were drones back then. What the fuck? Be sick. Home alone. Recovering from partying a little too hard with extended family. Hugging water bottle and watching videos. Comfy.png. Hear strange high-pitched sound. Assume it's tinnitus. Sound audibly changes the direction it's coming from. Good, it's not tinnitus. Assume it's whatever I'm watching. Stop video and the sound persists. Continue watching, but the sound grows louder until it's too distracting. Turn off laptop. The sound persists. The source seems to keep changing. Get annoyed. Scour the whole house, assuming it's a device inside. No device I get near produces the sound. Go turn fuses off, assuming it's a device that I can't see. Sound persists and slowly flows louder for what has to be an hour. Decide to go outside and take a walk, cause the sound's too annoying to stay in. Get to the door. Pitch black outside, cause countryside. Open the door and suddenly get blasted with blinding white light. The sound gets a thousand times louder. Pee pants a little. Well, uh, a lot, actually. Shut the door and lay on the floor like an idiot. See light coming from one window to another through open doors of rooms. Light stops. Sound starts to subside. Sit there for a couple minutes until I decide it's a fever dream. Promise myself to never drink again and go back to bed, hoping that I'll wake up. Wake up the next day. Skin on face feels hot and dry. Drink some water and go to the mirror. Entire front of body is sunburned, as if I fell asleep while sunbathing. My face when I had spent a total of two hours in the sun that entire month. My face when aliens gave me sunburn. Be me. Eight or nine, maybe. Pretty modern house, by all accounts. Not very spooky. Occasionally, I hear a man say, Hello! When upstairs playing. It's a deep voice, sometimes stretching the vowels. Hello! Something old about the voice. Almost strained. Always very clear, but never anyone around. Shrug it off. Maybe I can hear a neighbor outside, or maybe it's my imagination. Very rational on reflection, as modern me would be spooked. One night, I'm in bed looking down the hall at my parents' doorway. A hand creeps around the frame and waves to me. Both parents are downstairs. I nope out, start screaming. Mom comes upstairs and I tell her. Looks around and nothing's there. Tells me it must be a nightmare. I don't think so. I'm creeped out now. A short while later. Parents are at home, but they're both outside. Little sister, five or six, and I are playing at the top of the stairs. Hello. I look at my sister. She clearly heard it too. Did you hear that? I ask. I hear it all the time. We both hear a loud laugh. It's the same voice as the strained old man. But there's something wicked now. It's malicious. We both scream, run down the stairs, down the hall, and out to the yard. We go up to the road. Both parents are washing the car. No one else was around. Burst into tears. And we move shortly after. My sister and I vividly still remember this day, still, almost 30 years later. I had a series of glitches in the Matrix lasting about a week, and then I never experienced them again. Be feminine moving to a new flat with boyfriend. Go for a walk around the area. See cyclists on a straight road with no turnoffs. Truck passes cyclist. Look away for a second. Cyclist is gone. The truck is still in front of me. Passes me. I look behind it. No cyclist. Assume he must have turned into a driveway obscured by truck while I was passing him. Cyclist rides past me from the opposite direction. Not even 30 seconds later. Literally the same day, I take laptop out of my bag. It's a ThinkPad like mine, but it's one generation newer. Ask boyfriend if it's his, cause he's an autistic ThinkPad lover and has like five of them. It's not his. It has all the same stickers and all my stuff on it, but it's definitely newer. I 100% had one that can't move its screen 360 degrees 
and it did not have a touchscreen. We even discussed getting me one that does all of this for my lectures. Another one. Find an old t-shirt with a very distinct print on my drawer. Problem is, I ripped it into pieces and used it as a rag a couple days before, as I had nothing to clean with. Open kitchen drawer to get a knife. Grab new knife. Handle is black with green. It was black with orange. Check order I placed for it online. Clearly says orange. Cooked with these knives several times before, and I really like the color. There's no way I misremembered it. Sheets that I bought from Ikea somehow have a different tag from a different store. I have eight tarantulas because I'm a big bug enthusiast. Go to feed them one day. Seven terrariums. Boyfriend, what did you do with my curly hair dot gif? He doesn't know what I'm talking about. Says that I've always had seven. I even had a notebook dedicated to my tarantulas to note down their preferred conditions and behavior. There was a curly hair in the notebook. Have a spider that's a real runner. Don't close the door all the way after feeding. Spider escapes. Go to the kitchen for a cup because it's a venomous one. Go back. Spider's in the terrarium and the door is closed all the way. Be me, Swiss Anon. Driving home from Spain through Bordeaux. Stay in an Airbnb with Garden. It's in a village called... I ain't reading that. Go home after dinner at 11 p.m. Lay in bed. Hear some sounds. Like someone is breathing through a machine. Deep breathe in and out through the mouth. It doesn't stop for 20 to 30 minutes. Get my clothes on. Tell my ex-girlfriend I'll go and have a look. Maybe someone's dying. Keck. Go out. Listen to the sound coming from the house next to me. On the other side is a bigger property with a stone wall. Little bushes and trees and a big house. 150 feet from the street. Suddenly, the sounds come from behind the stone wall. I go there, looking into the property. There's nothing. Out of nowhere, the sound is now right next to me. While turning and spinning around, I take a look at the point where the sound is coming from, and there's nothing. Run as fast as I never ran before or after in my life. Why does everyone keep saying that? <laughs> I'm like going crazy now. It followed me to the fence of the Airbnb property. Look at the gate from the window. Nothing to see. But you clearly hear the breathing. What the fuck? Stay inside. Girlfriend's crying. What do? Anon, your head is playing games. Call ambulance. Sound's still going for 15 minutes. Ambulance arrive. Suddenly, nothing to hear. Go into the large property. It was to be sold. Searched the property for 15 minutes and I told them what I heard. They make fun of me in French, thinking I don't understand what he has seen a ghost means. Me chimping out and I didn't drink, smoke, or do anything else. After 20 minutes of nothing, they go. I go inside. No joke. One minute later, the same fucking sound started again. Girlfriend wanted to just get the fuck out. Closed the window. Told her to sleep. What? Anyway, told her to sleep. I honestly can't explain it. If it would have been an animal, we would have found it. And the sound wouldn't have just stopped and started again. Not enough in a wood stories, so I'm a post mine. Love you, T6. Be 16-year-old tard. Visit grandparents in a very rural area frequently. Go for night walks in the woods. Take cousin with me one night. Moon is really bright. Leave flashlight at home for more spooks. Decide to try a new trail that we've never walked before. Get lost, of course. Roam around for hours trying to go to the direction that we came from. Fail miserably. Deep forest. Way darker than the part we came from. Smells like something died nearby. Smell comes from the very direction we're heading. Decide to still go there because we're convinced. It's the general direction of our village. Come to a small overgrown field with an old, clearly abandoned house. These are pretty common in the area. Stop and try to get signal or check maps. No luck. Give up on saving battery and turn on phone flashlight. Go towards the cabin hoping to find a landline phone. Obviously it would be disconnected, but we were desperate. Dead animal smell is clearly coming from the house. There are some faint, wet-ish sounds coming from the house. Would never have heard it if not for the fact that the forest was completely quiet. Stop in the doorway, whispering to my cousin that we should probably leave. Don't be a pussy, Anon. Well, fuck you, I'm going that JPEG. First room is totally ruined. Someone must have searched it for valuables. Smell is pretty much unbearable, so go around the room as quickly as possible. No phone, of course. 
go to the other room. Cousin right behind me. I shine the shitty phone flashlight into the room. It takes us a good few seconds to register what we're seeing. There's a badly decomposed carcass on the ground. Can't really tell what animal it is. Three deer are standing over it. They lift their heads up in unison. Their mouths are covered with brown decomposing blood. There's some kind of tissue hanging from the one's mouth. One of these fuckers turns towards us and stands on its hind legs, perfectly upright. Fight or flight kicks in. I book it out of the cabin after cousin. Turn around. One of the deer is standing, yes, standing, on two legs, on the porch with tissue of whatever poor critter that it was eating, still hanging out of its mouth. Cry and shit my pants a little. We run in a completely random direction, tripping over fallen trees and getting slapped in the face by bushes. Cousin runs face first into a huge spider web. He's terrified of spiders. Stops and starts yelling that he can feel it under his shirt. I just tell him to shut the fuck up. He does, sobbing slightly. We hear a faint sound of twigs breaking behind us. I shine phone flashlight into the brush. Three pairs of eyes reflecting light in the distance. Run, cousin Anon, run. We keep getting fucked up by the bushes. Whatever spider was under his shirt has surely fallen out or died from all the twig snaps that we endured, but he keeps sobbing. After what felt like a marathon, we run out onto a dirt road. We follow it until we see houses. See a street sign pointing to our village. We're saved, and on. Walk back to the village in complete silence. By the time we arrive, the sun is up. Cousin only speaks up as we step on the porch. Anon, did you see what those deer were eating? Yeah, decomposing animal, why? There were scraps of clothing on the body. My face when? Deer ate a dead guy.